Good evening and welcome to this special edition of Special Assignment. I'm Aldrin Simpia. From tonight, Special Assignment focuses on the ANC's elective conference. In the next coming weeks leading up to the ANC's elective conference, we'll bring you interviews, mini documentaries and views from ordinary ANC members as well as South Africans as we go in depth on what promises to be the story of the year. To start off this special edition, I will spend the next hour in conversation with the non-suspended ANC Secretary General, Gwede Mandashe. You can be part of the conversation by sending us your questions or comments to our Twitter, Twitter handle, using our Twitter handle, that is at SABC News Online, using the hashtag, hashtag SABC News. You can also send us your video comments and questions via WhatsApp to 081-732-8421. Mr. Gwede Mantashe, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Adrian. So you've not been suspended? It never arose in the NEC. I was reading this headline for two days, uh, Kwede Mantasha suspended, uh, Zuma faction want to suspend Mantasha, and I go to the NEC for three days, it, it, it doesn't arise once. Was there a push though, just ahead of the NEC meeting, to have Kwede Mantasha um, suspended or disciplined? No, you're going to work for 11 years, uh, uh, for nine years, 11 months, and then we're left with four weeks, people have the courage to suspend you. It's, it's not doable. It's just too late. So these reports that we are receiving are all lies, that Gwede Mantashe, that Figi Lembalula, the Minister of Police, who's also an NEC member, put this on the agenda and wanted Gwede Mantashe to be suspended. It didn't arise in the NEC, it didn't arise in the NWC. Uh, it's a fake news. It's a fake news story. What could be the cause behind that? I don't know. It's desperation. Uh, that's how I, I describe it. In politics, when there's tension and competitive politics, people become very desperate when things don't go their way. Is it an internal thing? An internal thing? An internal sense of desperation coming out of the ANC? It can only come from the ANC. No other person from outside of the ANC can even discuss and contemplate suspending the Secretary General of the ANC. Why was the NEC meeting <coughs> extended for so long? No, no, we, we set it for three days, actually. So there was no additional day. We said we have an, an NWT on Friday, we have an NEC Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. That's what we did. Actually, we stopped early today. By lunch, we're through with the business. Can we speak about the Eastern Cape report that was tabled, whether it was accepted? We discussed the Eastern Cape report. Actually, there's no one Eastern Cape report. There were actually five of them. Wow. Uh, Five of them, because the deployees of the ANC were NEC deployees to the conference, tabled a report of their observation and the processes of the conference. That's report number one. Report number two was a report of the PEC of the Eastern Cape itself. Report number three was an appeal by a section of the old PEC that is appealing the outcome of the conference. And report number four was a report of the old secretariat of the Eastern Cape. So, and the fifth one, which was not written, was a report of the visit by the NWC to all the regions of the Eastern Cape. So there was no one report from the uh, Eastern Cape. We tabled it, attached all those reports. What was the decision then on the Eastern Cape? Uh, the Eastern Cape, because all the time we started with um, the Eastern Cape as a complaint and a concern. And we asked that question specifically in a meeting with the people who raised the concern. And in the last meeting in East London, they turned around and said, no, it's an appeal. Now, the decision of the, of the NEC is that you don't put aside and push aside an appeal. That appeal must be heard properly, processed, and the recommendation must come to the NEC, and that is what is going to happen. And to tell us about the task member, the task team, the members of the task I team. I won't tell you that until they are told. Who? Until the task team members are until told? Until they are told, because we Who? took a decision. Until uh, who's told? The task team members, it is announced to the NEC, it is announced to the province itself, everybody is aware. Then I can go public on, on that. And the court cases that are anticipated in the, in the Eastern Cape, there are at least two court cases? No, there, there are actually four that have gone past. 
So uh, basically, there is a, a lawyer in the state Cape called Nochesin Mtata, uh, who has no other professional work other than taking the case to, to court. We're expecting him to stay there because there's no, nothing to do. Is there any, any reason with or reason with intervening in the Eastern Cape and ensuring that there aren't these court cases? Our job is to unite ANC members. That is our responsibility. Uh, we have no responsibility to beg an OJS not to go to court. We can't. It's not our. Is, is it an indication at all that um, the internal processes of the ANC are failing, and that's the reason why I see so many people going to court? The, 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 the only thing that you do, you will always fail to acknowledge, Alton, is that every court case that has gone to court, any court case of the ANC, has not found irregularity, has not found fault with our processes. We get found guilty on something else. That's why if we're having 16 cases in court, we'll lose one case in case at end and win all the other 15 because processes are thorough and involved. Mm. But people uh, now have changed from being members of the NC for desire to serve. People want to be in the NC because they see it as an opportunity to access resources and therefore people behave very strangely. And therefore commitment and sacrifice is replaced by greed and desire to access resources. Interesting that you should actually speak about that, the reason why some people join the ANC. If you look at this clip that we're going to play right now, it is from the former president, uh, Thabo Mbeki, at the 52nd ANC's elective conference, where the former president, Thabo Mbeki, highlighted the need for the movement to maintain its character to serve the interest of the people and not personal agendas. We're gathered here to discharge our responsibilities as delegates from the branches of our organization. And I trust that we will do so sincerely and diligently, conscious of the historic obligation imposed on our movement to lead not only the membership of the ANC, but the entire South African nation. And in everything we do over the next few days, we should continue to sustain and demonstrate the understanding that characterizes all members of the movement that, were, of, that the ANC was established 96 years ago to serve the people of South Africa and not our interests as members. <laughs> Among other things, this means that when we close this 52nd National Conference, we must be able to report to the masses of our people that we've taken all the necessary decisions focused on the acceleration of our advance towards the achievement of the goal of a better life for all. Well, 10 years after that comment from uh, former President Thabo Mbeki, the issue still persists. Yes. The reason that it persists is that a liberation movement um, working under kinds of illegality. You must remember that even discipline is a part of the security. And security of individual members and the organization is a priority. And that liberation movement ascends to power. It becomes a political party that is governing. When that happens, then people get into a new environment. They're in charge of big resources. And many of them get attracted and tempted by this resource that are in charge of. And that same movement has to adapt and appreciate that it is dealing with a total new environment and it must guide its membership differently. And that is the, 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 the challenge we're having here. It's not new. You can go to any liberation movement. You'll find the same criticism. Is it possible to eradicate it, though? It is, po it is possible if, because it, it, it takes the individual. That's why it starts. I must appreciate that if I'm put in a department to run it, and there are lots and lots of resources, everything that is that department is not mine except what is paid to me, and there's a name, it's called a salary. That is all that belongs to me. Everything else that I get out of that department, I'm reducing the capacity of the state to serve. And once we begin to emphasize that and educate people to understand that uh, we can reduce it, uh, but it will require us to be very harsh and hard. Chinese call it dealing with both
tigers and flies. And we know that the Chinese Communist Party is really harsh when it comes to issues around uh, corruption. Let's go to a quick ad break. Uh, when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with the Secretary General of the ANC. As we've indicated that you can send through your WhatsApp videos, please do make sure that when you send through those WhatsApp videos that you also do include your name. We won't be accepting any messages through WhatsApp, but rather, um, if you want to send through a text message, you can do that by sending a tweet that is at SABC News Online using the hashtag, hashtag Guedemantasha. Let's go to that quick ad break. The real person. <laughs> and it's nutritious and delicious. It's good. I really like it. This celebrates being South African. We love our beer. We love our food. We love our music. So for knowing who are going, you must know where you come from. For all your travel trends, catch us every Sunday, 12 midday on Channel 404. Welcome back to the special edition of Special Assignment. It was a countdown to the ANC's 54th um, National Conference. Uh, we went out in the streets to find out what people would have to say to Secretary General Gwede Mantasha. But before we go to those voxies, let's just quickly ask Gwede Mantasha, as you look at the promo that we're just playing right now, seeing these different visuals of seven presidential candidates, what do you make of it? Uh, that there's a phase uh, in the process of nominating and electing a president. At a point, everybody can raise their hand and say, I'm available, I can be nominated. The process that we're in now, we're busy with the actual nominations by the branches of the NC. Uh, and we've covered a, a distance, two provinces are above 90 in terms of PGM's run. Uh, two other provinces, one is at 80 something, 85, and two are above 70. So basically, the majority of the provinces are going to complete their PGMs. Mm -hmm. And there are few, one in the 60s, two in the 50s, only one that is below 50%. Now, when you have that, what comes out of those PGMs will determine whether we have seven or two or three. Mm -hmm. uh, we're presidential candidates. And uh, we don't want to... What's the threshold, though? Um compared to what happened during the last elective conference. It, the, things seem to be a bit different this time around. No, there's nothing different. The Constitution is very specific. It says you will have to be nominated by a province. Okay. One province. You must be elected by a province. Now, election by a province looks very simple and easy. But it means you must be the lead candidate in a province to be in the ballot box. Well, if you look at the current numbers, it seems like things are a bit tricky. As we've indicated that earlier on, we went out on the streets to ask people their views and what they have to ask um, the Secretary General of Guedemantashe, the uh, Secretary General of the ANC. Let's take a listen to what they had to say. I would say, uh, where do you think South Africa will be like in the next five years? I would ask that question to Mantashe. I think Gwede Mantashe is a hypocrite of note. He doesn't know where he stands. Um, we've seen with this, uh, when Cyril pronounced his late last, uh, on Sunday in Limpopo, he, he lashed out on Cyril for doing that. Meanwhile, he knows very well that he isn't the Cyril's late and he's been supporting Cyril. But he doesn't have the guts to challenge the president. The president has been, um, has been touting uh, Nkosa Zanatlamini's name, but he has never lashed out on him, but he had the guts to lash out on Cyril. So 
Gwere Mantaj is a hypocrite. That's what I think of him. The SG has, has tried his level best to bring sanity to the organization. He must deliver a successful national conference. We need job, jobs in South Africa. We need um, um, infrastructural development. And state capture must be eradicated. Secretary General of the ANC, Gwede Mantashe, are you hypocritical? No. The, the, the problem with people uh, is that but like when they don't run an organization, uh, they think that because in a lineup your name is there, you must actually tremble on the principles. That does not work in real life. In the real life is that no slates by whomsoever. And you must stick to that principle whether you think that that slate favors you or not. And that, that is not hypocritical. What would be hypocritical would be to allow yourself to be tempted to cover up for a slate because your name is there. Uh, we have not uh, left out on anybody who is a candidate and we have supported a candidate. We have not. And I wouldn't start doing that uh, because somebody else does it. But what is important is that people are campaigning, people must be nominated by the branches, people must convince the branches, and that is what they should happen. And, and, and but is it, is it at all wrong for Cyril Ramaphosa to go out and mention that these are the preferred people that he'd like to work, work no. with? Also balancing it out with what the NGC decided in terms of what amounts to a slate. No. What the deputy president of the NGC should have done, he would have campaigned. And if he has a, a number of people he wants to work with, campaign with his team of campaigners for that team. That's it. Can you imagine a situation that we're having a stampede of individual candidates, uh, up to seven of them, who are, are called in the media presidential hopefuls? Can you imagine if, if one of those uh, presidential hopefuls can come up with a list? Then we don't have a stampede of individual candidates. We have a stampede of slates. There will be, that will be a crisis. Uh, to a, a great degree, it is the duty of the ANC, its leaders, its members, to minimum the harm that is done by the slaves on the organization. Has Ramaphosa approached you? Has he spoken to you and said that, Gwede um, Mantasha, I'd like you to serve with me uh, as the chairperson of the ANC? Many of those presidential of, of, uh, hopefuls have spoken to me. Uh, I want to work with you in this capacity, in this capacity. Uh, and I, I talk to all of them fortunately, and they say, no, I, I'm not going to be ready for this. I don't like this. So it's not only Ramaphosa who talked to me. Almost all of them have spoken to me. Would you say that Nkosa Zanadlaminizum has also approached you? I've spoken to her. Mm -hmm. yes. And what was her proposal? Or... Now, leave the proposal. I talked to every presidential candidate, and I think that is the correct thing to do. And in my view, they should talk among themselves as well. Who's this? this? Are you saying amongst the presidential Those hopefuls? Those presidential hopefuls must reduce that list by talking to each other themselves. And what would if, the outcome If be? they would do that, they will save the NC from a very fragmented elective uh, process. Are you then making the argument that what should happen is that there should be a consensus heading into the elective conference? Is there a better way for the ANC to remain united? The NC is having a history of consensus going and going to conferences. And the reason for that is because it was conscious of its succession program. It talked to individuals. It had the authority to say to an individual, yes, we know that you want to be elected in that position, but the organization does not think so. Mm -hmm. You are requested not to avail yourself. And that authority has disappeared, and I, and I wish it can come back where the ANC has authority over its cadres, it can persuade them to say, uh, you can work better as this combination, rather than this ugly contest among yourself. If that authority was there, the, the, this conference would be much, much, much better. You speak of a, of a succession plan. Yes. And um, you've spoken about two weeks ago, spoke about uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, and you've made the argument why why are people saying Cyril should not be president? They should come up with um, 
arguments arguing why he's not the right person for the job considering that he's deputy president. Some people argue that the ANC constitution doesn't say that. So why would you want to make the argument that the succession of the ANC president quite specifically is on the basis that this person is deputy and because of that automatically they should transcend to become president of the ANC? Actually, people are making a point that I have not made. <laughs> okay that they must be automatic and all that. Those are words that are manufactured by people when they shoot down an argument. The point I made is an old organization like ours, that is 105 years, in a month's time or two, it will be 106, cannot allow a free-for-all in this succession. That's the point I've made. I, I, that's why I didn't mention the word Ramaphosa. I, made, I, I raised a principal issue that says, if an organization respects itself, it must first discuss succession. It must manage it. It must ensure that it is smooth all the time. And I referred people to the historic incidents where succession was allowed to be free for all. And every time that happened, it became a disaster. I started with uh, Josiah Gumede being harshly removed in 1930. Big Sky taking over. A preeminent intellectual of the ANC, terrible and disastrous presidency. I made the example of Dr. Kuma, who took the ANC up in the 40s, uh, reintroduced militancy, rebuilt it, Youth League, Revive Women's League, African Mind Workers Union. And in 1949, because he couldn't agree with the Youth League, they came in and removed him and broke Dr. Moroka. That presidency was a disaster. He left them. Uh, he, he said, I always expressed it better in Kosa. Uguti, Dr. Morocco, Ushispa, and Emma Semin. Mm -hmm. Now, when Ushispa and Emma Semin, that's a crisis. And I said, since then, I, I, succession in the industry has been managed very, very carefully and systematically. And as a result of that, when Oliver Tambo came back and led a debate on to Mandela, there was no crisis. There was stability. Mandela in my gang handed over to President Mbeki. There was no crisis. When that competition started in Pulugwana, uh, there was almost a, a breakup in the NC. And I say, if we continue that way, we'll kill the NC. The constitution of the NC had always, Rule 5 of the NC, always allowed every member to elect and be elected. Let's listen to your predecessor actually in, uh, in Pulukwani making those comments around the unity of the ANC and how essential the unity of the ANC is. That is Khalima Mutlande, the previous SG of the ANC and the previous deputy president of the ANC yes. who never became president of the ANC. Yes. Let's take a listen. We once again affirmed the solemn pledge which commits us to abide by the aims and objectives of our organization, to participate actively in our movement without motives of material advantage or personal gain, to work towards making the ANC an even more effective instrument of liberation in the hands of the people, and to defend the unity, cohesion, and integrity of our organization and the movement that it leads. And that unity has never remained. Unity is something that you work on. Uh, it's not about uh, put, put, taking people, put them together, and say there's unity. Unity is a function of unity of people, it's a function of working together, it's a function of sharing trenches, it's a function of understanding that disagreeing on an item doesn't make your, you enemies. Once you begin to understand that, then you will appreciate that unity is important for the survival of the organization. Well, there you have it from the ANC Secretary General, Gwede Mantasia, who've indicated that you can send through your tweets um, to at SABC News Online, as well as send through your video comments via our WhatsApp line. We'll get you um, that uh, WhatsApp line. We'll pop that WhatsApp line very soon and uh, give you that number. Um, there it is, right at the bottom, 0817328421. Please, we want to emphasize only send through videos. We will not be accepting any text. Uh, let's go to a quick ad break and after that we'll be looking at those tweets as well as uh, the comments that you've been sending through.
But today we discuss the general practitioner or GP. So the quality of the doctors coming through our medical schools is excellent. Your GP is your family doctor. Your right. GP is your first point of care. Who determines how much a consultation fee should be? We set up networks of general practitioners and one of the conditions of the network was to agree to charge a certain fee. Specialists are specialists. We can't take away their role. We can't take away what they do for, for each patient in their disease entity. Our specialist colleagues as well don't appreciate patients coming straight off the street as it were to see them. They are highly trained. For health tips that will help you to adopt healthy living, catch Health Talk every Saturday from 9 to 10. We are your eyes in all major events around the world. A wonder not seen in the United States in almost 100 years. It looks like the sky of a different world. You see the stars out during the day. You see a sunset 360 degrees all around you. Before you leave, make sure that Drop Burn is taking you through traffic alerts all around South Africa. All we can do is stick to what we do and focus on our own job and not focus on them. In the box, we'll also don the red jersey in this match to mark the 25th anniversary of rugby unity in South Africa. An update on all major currency to guide you. A story of women in jail told in pictures by Fatima Mir through art that will blow your mind. Set the agenda for the day with Morning Live. News, business, sports and weather from local and around the globe here on News Today. It was important for me to need all of these issues in the park as they appear so that we can give the assurance to the holders of pensions. South Africa has more than 24,000 plant species which can be used to generate income for her citizens. People believe uh, that we as Africans have uh, very little to offer the world in terms of science and technology. The 24-year-old was the last rider to be caught after a break of more than 180 kilometers in Sunday's men's elite race at the World Road Championships in Bergen, Denmark. Smith is also the African Road Race Champion, the South African Race Champion and the South African Time Trial Champion. Tune in to News Today every Monday to Friday from 3 to 5.30 p.m. Well, it seems that this conversation is really gaining momentum on social media. Let's take a look at some of your views that have been sent through. Uh, has he still believed that those who fought for freedom have a right uh, to eat the state's money, as he alluded to in my uh, timeline? Sorry. Number two would be, was he lying when he said he didn't know anything about his wife and son winning uh, half men tenders? His wife's uh, winning being over a billion rand, and then the son being paid over 160 million rand. How how is it possible that uh, as a head of the the house, uh, he wasn't aware of that. Number three, what are his views regarding Matabile Lamini, Nomvula, Nongonyane, Brian Molife, Faith Motambi, and Pongo? And of course, the main man, uh, Zuma. Thank you. Jeez, if only I could sit down with him and ask him why he's putting the bash of those ministers that he's just listed, as well as Brian Mulife, why he's putting them <coughs> together. But one of the questions that he asked there is the issue around apparently your wife yes. and your son getting state tenders and you denied this at some point. Yes. In order, uh, I always tell people that there are many people in South Africa who wish I was rich. 
Uh, they give me all kinds of tenders. A tender given to a common of young people in the Eastern Cape in Amatole is uh, branded all over as my wife's company. And I can tell you, I repeat it, I can do it under oath. The Mandasha family doesn't have a cent of shares in that company. Uh, we've been given a tender in ESCOM, 1.4 billion catering tender, which is uh, a, a bid vest tender. Uh, it is my wife's tender. I, I am supposed to have 1.4 billion rand, and I don't have a share in, 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 in uh, bid vest. Now, let me explain that one, because it came again with Tudumien in uh, uh, SAA, SAA that yeah. he gave <coughs> tenders to a bid vest because among the people are shells and bid vest is my wife. We don't have a share in bid vest. Now, what people confuse is that my wife was a board member of a company called Vela Sev, belonging to Miki Kaia. And that company was absorbed by bid vests. And they all, the three of them, became board members of Bitvest. And he, she had to resign from the board of Bitvest because Bitvest has gaming interests and therefore gambling interests do not allow any person in the board who is linked to a politically exposed person. And my wife had to resign from that board seat, which was a non-executive board seat. So I'm giving this detail so that people must not have a view that that these big tenders that are coming my way uh, to my wife and I'm hiding them, I don't have them. And, 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 and when people give me all these things, I always come to conclusion that people wish me well. They wish I was rich. That and your son? My son is a student. When he was said uh, to be having a tender, he, he was studying at, uh, at Forte. But like any student, in 1972, I worked in a construction company in Tirfle in the Western Cape. That didn't make me the owner of that company. I was a part-time student working there. And when he was accused to be running this, he was a student. He has finished the degree. He went to China, did two years of his master's. He's back now as a professional. Okay. So uh, I wish they can be rich because it will make me, it will give me a good retirement. <laughs> Let's look at some of the tweets that have been coming through. Um, can we get those tweets up quickly, just to see some of the people who've been sending through the tweets using the hashtag, um, hashtag Mantashe. Well, there they are. Um, a question there from Anati Ndozini, Mr. Mantashe. Why didn't you have an interest in being president, and do you still plan to be in the NEC of the ANC after December? Why under his watch as the Secretary General of the ANC has the ANC had so much internal issues and why he never acted swiftly in issues raised by, raised by concerned factions to his office? I wish that Smanga could have gone in more in detail um, with regards to those concerns that have been raised to the office because I could imagine that uh, Mr. Mantasha gets many of these um, problems. Well, let's see. So Gwena Mantasha describes the weekend report that suggests he's going to be fired as fake news. Now he's willing to take a leadership position if... Um, is that, okay, it seems that tweet is incomplete. Um, Aldrin, I'm fully behind Gwede Mantashe, our general secretary, to be the chairperson of the ANC. Under comrade uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, they will unite, I uh, guess it means our movement or our ANC. That tweet is completed. Well, there you have the questions. Why isn't uh, Gwede Mantasha running to become ANC president? It's because, uh, you see, if you look in the list of the comrades who are running for presidents, Actually, all of them are quality comrades. Uh, I just wish they would be in a team together. A slate. They would be in a team. A slate. A team. A slate. There's a difference between a team and a slate. Uh, it's a slate when they are campaigning and fighting. When they are elected into a team, they have a responsibility to work together and build the NC. All of them have capabilities. Different strengths, you can look at them, analyze them individually on your own. Now, and, and I made it, an announcement quite early that, listen, when they were three, four, five, six, seven, I said, this is a stampede. Even if I had an interest to complicate that speed by joining that stampede, I would actually make the life of the NC more difficult. I took that decision quite early.
in, in but the you country. are available to serve on the ANC's I'm top officials. To, I'm prepared to serve in any structure of the ANC where I'm, I'm elected to. Okay. Any structure of the ANC. And um, serving as chairperson under uh, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa? I'm not available to be president. I'm not available to be deputy president. I'm not available to be secretary general again. Uh, I'm not available to be treasurer general because the ANC will be bankrupt within three months. Uh, because leave the money that is said I'm having is it, my weakest point, handling money and doing fundraising and doing that. It's my weakest point. And the ANC knows that, and I told them that, listen, if you want to be bankrupt in three months' time, elect me treasurer general. But anything else I will be available for. So which means that only chairperson is available? Possibly. Well, that's the only one that seems to be available. Possibly, <laughs> yes. But NSC has 80 other seats. Well, 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 yes, uh, well, unless, unless if they decide to yeah. reduce the, yeah. the, the number of NECs yeah, as, uh, as uh, the, the discussion documents. I uh, don't reduce numbers and change the kind of the ANC until it is changed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's speak quickly about the, the policy proposals of the ANC in this discussion document, mm. some that have been made back in 2007. One of those policy proposals was the reduction of the ANC, or rather the reduction of the provinces. And that has never happened. It's something that comes over and over and over again, but it has never been implemented. It's discussed intensively in the ANC. I must uh, tell you that it is more complex now because we have provinces that are operational. When you reduce them, uh, it will mean that you will have to align systems and processes in various provinces. I can tell you that when we discuss that in the ANC, we have eight ANC premiers who are sitting in that discussion. Uh, and the, basically, if you say, let's reduce these provinces from eight to four. Uh, we have the Cape, we have Transvaal, we have Free State, we have Natal, as, a, as of old. Uh, it becomes quite a painful issue. You begin to think of the various infrastructure. That debate is happening, but it is a painful a debate when it, when it takes place. And one wonders whether it will ever happen, uh, considering uh, that you have the DA on the other side that's arguing that this is a political ploy and so forth, that the ANC is trying the DA. Actually, when we, when we talk discussions, we don't think uh, of policies as a response to the DA. We look into what is practical, because you find some of the provinces that are, are seen as small, being relatively more efficient and working better and reaching out for the people. Because governance is ability to reach out to the people. That's why when you go to local government, that is where the investment should go. That's where the strength of government and resources should go. Because that is government next door. You can walk into a councillor's office, you can raise the issue, and they can respond with time. And after time, those councillors respond to questions that are not a municipal question, but government is because people know government. They don't know municipality, province, or national. Here's a, a hot potato, and it's a tweet that has been sent through. Um, what is Mantasha's view on state capture? Um, Zuma has just said there is no such thing, and this was on a different channel where he had an interview, and he indicated that there's no such thing as state capture. His argument was that if there's state capture, it would mean that the state is captured, which means that all three arms of the state is captured. What's your argument on this? You see, this debate started a little bit uh, before we reached the stage of a state capture. We start off a uh, corporate capture where companies sponsor individual leaders, their programs, uh, programs to vilify their imminent enemies in the organization. We call that corporate capture. Then we said, once it reaches a stage where you see in government, sections of government, beginning to use the infrastructure of the, of the state to actually uh, serve interests, that is state capture. And that reality is there. It is not the entirety of the state that must be captured. If three, four, five departments are captured, that is state capture. And the three departments or the arm of government is only the extent. Is that the case right now? Are there departments in government that are captured? State capture is a reality, and that debate is raging in society. And the worst thing that we can do as the ANC is to dig our hands in the sands and allow that debate to rage on 
without us being involved in providing leadership. Therefore, we'll be spectators, and the masses are going to overtake us. But is that capture happening it's right now? It's a reality. Now? So there it's are departments that are captured? It's a reality. There are ministers that are captured? State capture is a reality. Okay. Well, let's um, quickly see some of um, the other views that we got from uh, South Africans on the streets and the questions that they had to ask um, Secretary General Gwede Mandashe, some of the questions that they'd like you to address. Let's take a quick listen. We never thought that it would be this long, that uh, after the two decades of our young democracy, we should be experiencing this autocratic suppression and everything opposed on us. And it's even worse than apartheid. So he has to answer to that. Why should it, it, it be like that? Because it's on our expense, you know. When is he going to learn to stand to what he's saying? Because what I know about him, he says something today and then acts, uh, acts differently tomorrow. To the Secretary General of the ANC, I'd like to ask him about the unemployment rate of the youth because it seems to be increasing by the minute. The more these, the more the youth graduate, is the more they sit at home with their applications and they can't get any employment. It must be disturbing, though, that you have some South Africans who feel that um, the country is worse under the ANC-led government. No, um, in, in London. Uh, some people talk of apartheid, they theorize. Others never tasted it in reality. Uh, because apartheid was an evil against humanity. You know, I'm a mine worker by background. I, I was talking to business people a few days ago and said to them, uh, you always say you want a change in labor laws, uh, have flexibility. I said, I have an experience of being fired uh, before we're allowed to have unions. Uh, at 10, taken from my workplace at 10, at 12 I'm fired, at 2 I'm dumped in a train in Park Station. Now, if you don't have that experience, you can't talk about it, because you don't know it. I went to the mines with metric already. I couldn't have a plastic certificate, uh, because it was reserved for a scheduled person, which means a white person who is having standard one was having a right to have a plastic certificate, I couldn't have it. In 1979, the main workers in the call Solidarity Today organized a national strike because a plastic certificate was given to a colored person in OKIP. Uh, and, and they went to a national strike at the country law, country law wide. And if you don't know those experiences, don't talk about it because you don't know it. Talk about our problems. You know, uh, I normally quote uh, uh, one biblical quotation that I normally use that the distance we have covered is wonderful because things that have changed, as we go deeper into democracy, the more our people will uh, forget because we we'll all of a sudden forget that in 1994 there was no electricity in the villages of Kala. And today there, there's electricity in almost every village in Kala. And people, because we, we have had it, we're taking it for granted now, we forget that it was not there. People forget that in the district of Kala, that's where I come from, uh, when we went to school, there was one high school, there are today 10. And then access to higher education is by, to higher education, that gives you access to uh, teacher education is there. People forget that in 1994, there was only about 150,000 black students in university. Today, there are about 850,000. And that is the distance we've covered. And people forget it now because we're used to it, it is normal, and we think that uh, we, we, we need something more. Unfortunately, we have, it have to leave it there for now. We have to go to a short break, but we are live on um, Facebook as well as on YouTube, so you can follow the discussion there if, you don't, if you're not in front of a TV or if there's a friend of yours who's somewhere um, out in South Africa or somewhere in the world. Just tell them that we're available on the YouTube SABC channel as well as on Facebook. Let's go to that short ad break.
It is 5 p.m. Central African time, broadcasting live from Johannesburg. This is PM News. Mugabe is wanted in South Africa on a charge of assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm. Mugabe allegedly assaulted local model Gabriela Engels with an extension cord. If the minister has uh, granted the first lady diplomatic immunity, then it, it, it then means that she, she will not be prosecuted. There will now be 16 countries that form part of SEDEC. The Comoros was added as a member state during this summit. New Zealand rugby great Sir Colin Meads has passed away at the age of 81 following the battle with the pancreatic cancer. In 1999, Meads was named New Zealand's greatest rugby player of the 20th century. This year, the bronze statue of Meads was unveiled in his hometown of Tekuti. Stay tuned to PM News for all your news updates every Saturday and Sunday from 1500 hours. Well, welcome back to the special edition of Special Assignment. My name is Aldrin Simpia, and we're still in conversation with the Secretary General of the ANC, who has made it clear that he's not available for that position anymore. Um, let's quickly take a link and take uh, this uh, short um, clip that we have from President Jacob Zuma back in Mangahung, where he was um, closing down the conference in Mangahung, where he spoke about um, the ANC's decisions and decisions being taken by the branches and how those decisions are binding. Once the elections have taken place and the ANC branches through their representatives have spoken, that decision is a decision of all of us. If in the process of contestation, whether to say certain things, whether to shout certain slogans, whether to sing certain songs, it is clear that once the ANC has spoken, we have got to look at what we say, how to treat one another. Once the ANC has spoken, once the branches have spoken, that's it. Um, question that's on the minds of many heading into the elective conference is the possibility of the ANC splitting. No, they, they were not planning for a split was planning for a good conference, a conference that will be robust, candid, comrades to engage, but will realize that they are not enemies. Uh, they have different preferences, they are contesting, and they are not enemies. If we can emphasize that message over and over, we can't work for a split. Mm. Just um, listening to President Jacob Zuma, one thing that comes to mind is that President Jacob Zuma, of course, his term comes to an end. He said he's not going to be standing again for ANC president. One then starts asking the questions about uh, President Jacob Zuma's legacy. What would you say his legacy is? I'm sure that question will be more appropriate to him. And from your observation as uh, Secretary General of the uh, party? You know... I, I don't think I can talk about the legacy of President Jacob Zuma. Uh, if you ask me the legacy of the 10 years when he was president, I was Secretary General, I would answer that question better. So you won't be able to say what you make of President Jacob Zuma's 10 years president of the ANC and um, it is, it as is, the country? It is actually unethical for me to dig into President Zuma. But if you ask me about the 10 years I was Secretary General, I will tell you many things. And what would you say about those 10 years? I because some you, are saying that you've been, quote unquote, mandashing, that you have uh, been hypocritical, that yes, you have been failing to deal yes. with some issues raised uh, by uh, the party members. The, 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 the issue with party members, I know that by now. When they're angry at that point in time, they think that you must all just do what they want. If you say no, if you say process these things, they get very agitated because they are angry at that time. But one thing I can tell you about, of the 10 years, the first five years was wonderful for me. Uh, uh, we saw uh, good changes, we saw restructuring of the education, we saw increase on the access of education, we saw 
transformation of FET colleges. We've seen a number of things that changed in that period. Some, the some, second term, this term, mm, is quite a difficult one. Some of the people who are not happy with your tenure as um, Secretary General of the party mm -hmm. is um, the veterans who once called themselves 101. They said that they wanted a consultative conference. Uh, that consultative conference never happened. And now it's going to be happening. But um, it seems as though that the ANC as the mother body will not be playing any role in that. We're going to a national conference. You, you know, a consultative conference, there were two of them. One was in, in uh, Morogoro, other one was in Kabwe. And Oliver Tambo explained that it, this is a consultative conference because only a section of the ANC is here. And therefore, he had these consultative conferences. To just copy that concept to here, when we're going to a conference, we should do what a consultative conference would do in exile. We don't think it's a good idea. We've discussed this in details in the NC. We've told our comrades uh, that, listen, uh, comrades, uh, you are going to a consultative conference. Uh, it's your initiative. It has nothing to do with the NC. Individual members of the NC, if they go there, they go there in their personal capacity. We have a national conference on the 16th to the 20th of December. And that's where all the brains are and you the energy. Are you shunning them at all? Are you? We're not shunning them. We are actually nudging them to come into the ANC structures. That's why we've allowed many of them to be in the Veterans League executive. The president of the Veterans League, Snuggis Galal, who happened to be working here at some time, is now the president of the Veterans League, is from that group of veterans. We've allowed them to contest and be part because they're veterans of the NC. And our view is that they will be using their ideas best and, uh, and better if they're in the status of the NC because they, they have a formal recognition of representing a structure. They can uh, uh, interview and engage anybody in the NC in that one. But you can't have veterans that constitute them almost as a protest group. I think it's not a good idea, but history will, uh, will tell us if we're right or they're right. Because it is uh, for sociologists. Let me just quickly ask you about a proposal that has been made by presidential candidate Lindy Wesusulu. She says that once she becomes president of the ANC, she'd like to have what she calls an ANC presidential advisory council, which brings in former, former presidents of the ANC um, to be part of this advisory council. Is this a good idea? Is this what the ANC needs? Actually, in the ANC, there is a, a rule that is not written. Any former president of the NC has the right to come to any structure of the NC any time. Any time. From Mandela to Mbege, it will be to Zuma now. Any former president of the NC has a right to come to the NWC, has a right to the, come to the NEC. There is a standing invitation for them. If there is a different formula that can be used to get them involved, the better for the NC. Do you know perhaps why former President Thabo Mbeki hasn't been taking up this opportunity and instead there's been these letters that have been written? No, I know that uh, President Mandela didn't take that offer. He stopped at a point and stopped going to the NC altogether until uh, he left us. Uh, Comrade Mdawa has not taken that, uh, that offer. Uh, why? I, I won't know. There's a standing invitation for all former presidents. Well, thank you much, so much. Uh, the Secretary General of the ANC, Kweda Mantashe, we were in conversation with him on this special edition of a Special Assignment. As we've been indicating, uh, we've come to the end of this week's Special Edition. Join us again next week, Monday, where we will look at the Western Cape, the only province where the ANC does not govern and uh, where many ANC branches openly admit that the party has failed their constituency. They are also calling for a radical change in the leadership and say the future of South Africa, not just the ANC, depends on it. From me, Aldrin St. Pierre, and uh, all of us here, including the entire team, and you at home, thank you so much for watching. Let's uh, say it's another date again next week, Monday at 9.